um, five minutes into the meeting, we have approved the minutes with one amendment. <laughs> and, um, um, I, I wasn't, I, I, I think you're right, Judy. I don't think we should even think about that. I'm just answering Susan's question, which was, well, then how are these administered mm -hmm. in other places? Well, you, you, if there's another historic nonprofit that's that's um, that's dedicated to preservation, they can do it, but usually they will require a fee. Right. Um, historic New England or somebody like that, and the fees are substantial because there's some responsibility involved. But. But we could so, do it once somebody else owns it. Mm -hmm. And it would be faster, you know, if it's it wouldn't hold up the RFP. Right. So 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 what we would be recommending is that um, a preservation restriction be made a condition of sale for the building. Yeah. That's what I would recommend. Um, anything else on the preservation restriction? I mean, for the purpose of this brief letter. <laughs> um, what about the, it, it occurred to me <laughs> that of course, although those of us who own private property find out one way or the other where the town's property line is, you actually can't find out by looking at the assessor's maps because they just show the property out to the road. No, they don't. Yeah, they do. Well, the one I sent around didn't. But it doesn't, well. Uh, oh, that. The map? Um, yeah. But the assessor's map that you access through the town website does, it seems like. Does go out to the road. Yeah, for the ones, the pieces I've ever looked at, I think. Yeah, I mean, ours does. Yeah, ours does. And we've had some other conversations okay. about that. Um, but in any case, uh, I'm not aware that municipal properties have defined a portion of each property that is the town's right of way as distinct from the property, which is the issue here. When the visioning committee was talking to the select board about the center school, we got them to agree that the milk bottle should stay in place on site. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we talked about an easement for the milk bottle to stay and for the historical society to have access, mm -hmm. an easement that would both grant access across the lot and, and on the site itself. And I think that would be easier to implement. And it would also mean the Historical Society would be able to access the milk bottle from the driveway as opposed to up the hill through the fence. <laughs> um, what, what has been done next door to us is that the, the town's right of way line is pretty consistently about two feet in from the little rotty, soon to be replaced uh, sidewalk from town hall down to past the Brooks property, but there is a sort of lozenge shape <laughs> extrusion <laughs> from it that uh, encompasses the stockade stone, which is- Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Which is interesting, you know, I, I don't know when that happened. It may have happened when the property changed hands in 1948, which is when the Philip Kowski's bought it and built, um, would- um, Do we need to specify the legal form for this? No, I think I think we could, uh, what, I, what I was going to suggest would, the main point is protect the milk bottle. You know, we don't want to be told that somehow the historical society has to move the multi-ton yeah. <laughs> thing to prop, when they do not own property, you know, that's- Protect and provide access. We could give it sort of four, two, 
that there would be several ways that this could be achieved. There, could, I don't think there's a deed for this property. So um, it's going to be, I think it's not, when there isn't a deed that I think it's gonna be a legal problem in any event. So I think we're talking about protection and access and let the lawyers figure out the form, the form it should take. Um, I just happened to go on the, I'm on the assessor's map site and Judy's right. They do draw a line that sh shows, it's strange the way it goes around the school. It's got a, a an angle there that doesn't correspond. It, it doesn't exactly parallel the current road, if you know what I mean. It's like an awkwardly angled thing. It actually appears to go into the road in a weird way. But the set, you can see the setback on Chestnut Plain Road for the town common or whatever, however that's defined for all of, you know, for Donna, for your house, especially that, why is there. That, is that a different view from the view that you get when you first pull up the assessors? It maps? kind of depends. You got to zoom in because it doesn't show at a certain scale. You can't tell. But when you zoom in, um, then you can see suddenly that there is a margin in some places. In some places, it appears to be the same as the road, and it depends. It depends how close in you go. Yeah, this orange line, right? So, yeah. one of the issues, even in I, I, not to talk too much about my own life, but when we bought a property in Indiana that was very close to a corner. We discovered that our we were trying to give some land to our neighbor to straighten out a little problem, and and it got very complicated because his survey was from one road and our survey was from another road. I mean, we were we were like Ann Barker's house and John Hannum's house in this situation, but we and we touched, um, and the road had been widened, so it was. Um, it was rough, <laughs> you know, and maybe that's what this shows. Yeah, well, well it shows. Tell you this. Go ahead. It's very hard to measure the right of way because the road changes over has changed over time. Right, right. So, right. so like in. And I just don't know how accurate this assessor's map is because it shows Sylvia Nye's driveway as part of a house, which is wrong. And it shows her house being in the road, which is <laughs> also wrong. So if you look at it, it's, it was probably it, never true. Well, I don't know how they could <laughs> do these lines. You know, it, it made its own decisions here in a non human kind of way. Right, right. Um, so I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but no, I. No, 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 that's that. very helpful. So, so that the, Subject heading for this point should not be defining the town's right of way. That might be something that they'll need to think about, but it is protecting the milk bottle, protecting and access and ownership and the access site, to the yeah. site and the access. Right, right. Right. Do you think we would be doing them a service? I think we, the, our select board, I mean, by pointing out that there is no deed for this building? Uh, no. I did was not. There, I, there, I, suspect, I suspect Brian knows, and I don't think it, I don't think it matters to the select board. Uh, was there, there are ways to get around it, but. Yeah, and was the problem with the town hall that there was no deed or that the the deed was uh, I, I don't precise? remember. There, there was a deed problem, definitely, that held up that. Remember. remember, we had nearly a year's delay in securing that preservation restriction. Yeah. Um, okay. I get that. I assume there's no deed because there's no book and page reference in the in the assessor's map and they were they even had one for the church which right surprised right. me right I, I was looking at the assessor's maps for a different reason um 
in the area around uh, behind your house, Susan, Nasami, the adjacent houses, um, Carolyn and what's her name's house, you know, all of that. Mm -hmm. And several of them, several of those small plots simply said no information available. Um, I mean, they're marked as so who knows. Hmm. Um, okay, should we be pointing out that we haven't had a thorough analysis of the work that needs to be done, or is this not helpful at this point? We, the town, has not had. Is it our responsibility? What do you mean? No, 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 no. We, we, the town, the yeah, town. Okay. And the point was that um, at the meeting ten days ago, uh, Joyce said we've had a very thorough analysis, and Judy said in a tone I might usually use. <laughs> you know? Well, if you had it, it was not given to the vision, the ad hoc visioning committee, which I believe was code Nobody for Nobody gave us no, a budget. No, you haven't had it. It's just a memo. It's a one page memo from George Dole. You know? We didn't have a budget. What do you expect? <laughs> it had a number. It has a big number on it and it was appended, but it, that is not a thorough analysis. Um, in any case, I, I have to say I wavered on whether it is helpful or not to point this out at this now. I mean, if we're not confident that a thorough analysis was done, I don't think we should claim that it was. That doesn't mean we have to draw, draw attention to the fact that it wasn't done. Right. It seems like calling attention to the fact that your car's got three bald tires. Right. That's kind of what that's kind of <laughs> where know, I want. They ask you. You assume they're going to check. You know. Right. Right. I mean, anyone who is interested in buying this building is going to have. Uh, check the tires you know well right. our well like when you buy a house you have a house inspector but right. this is That's a more I mean. complex set of problems so should we just strike that i would say yes because if we claim something that the inspector finds not true we can be held responsible for it if we don't claim it it's on them and their inspector to find it we the town yeah 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 Okay, that's great. Um, uh, Judy, thank you for your work on the grants. That was super. Um, I basically just excerpted from and made a little shorter the discussion of this that was in the uh, visioning committee um, report. It, it occurred to me in the last parenthetical point about Bob O'Bear that we probably should say we understand that since Brian told Judy, who's told the rest of the committee that O'Bear is starting work, but we don't literally know that, right? Well, he has applied for a special permit and site plan with you. So something is happening. Okay, okay. He's planning um, nine apartments. Yeah. Is he related um, to Bill O'Bear? I don't know. I don't. Such an unusual name. Really. No, I, I, asked him, so I, I asked him when, when we were touring, we, the Historical Commission, all these royal we's, um, when we were touring the uh, Loose School, he's not related. Or if he is, it's really, really okay. distant. He lives, in, he lives in Greenfield or Turner's Falls. Is that what you just said, Trudy? I thought Conway, but it's, I'm not sure. Uh, um, Bill, I thought it moved here fairly recently, but I could be wrong about that. It probably doesn't matter. You mean fairly recently, like 30 years ago? Well, 40, 50 years, maybe, but uh, <laughs> you know. time has a different meaning here yeah. than it does other places. Um, okay. Everything else okay with this? set of points you know one sort of overall question um maybe judy can help answer this that what we are recommending to the select board is one of the least desirable options that the visioning committee had i think that a private that it be a private sale to 
some person who was not part of the town. Uh, either the town or the a lease from the town was a more desirable outcome for the uh, rehab of the building. And I'm, I'm not sure where that leaves us. Um, is that going to cause a, an issue with the visioning committee or does the community not really care at this point? Well, what can you do though? I mean- Nothing really, but- um, I think that's it. Um, I think the one reason that the, the committee wanted the town to own it was for community purposes and especially a cafe or something like that, or a, a meeting place or a coffee room or, you know, and I don't get any sense that that's in the cards at all. And. Well, there was also a lot of interest as I recall, and, and you were on the committee, Judy, I was not, but um, just from talking to people around the committee about, you know, a place for people to, you know, have exercise classes and whatnot. And I think the town has woken up to the fact, I mean, there are now things booked in the town hall, you know, on Sunday mornings and on Tuesday afternoons, and there are, and it is not fully booked. The, the cafe issue obviously is a separate issue. Um, did anyone, you, you wrote, Judy, to all the members of the visioning committee who still live in Waitley. It looked to me like that was your list. Um, yeah. Did anyone write back to you? I got thank you notes, but that, or thanks for keeping us updated or something, but. Good, well, that's good that you got that. I, I don't. I, this wouldn't be their main main choice. I don't think it's any of our main choices, but um, it does seem like a, the best viable option at the moment. Yeah, and if the thing is best used or, or the best use that people can think of is housing, then that's fine. Um, I, mean, I don't know what these people would have in mind and um, we, could, we could see. Um, it, it, it's an interesting, I thought about the question of expressing an opinion about potential uses and decided, decided that I did not favor that for two reasons. Um, one is maybe a formality that it doesn't seem to me it's the historical commission's role to decide what happens in the building. Our, their issue is the envelope. Um, not that we don't have opinions about things all the time, but the other is that, I, I mean, it is taking, it's taking some towns a while to transfer vacant municipal buildings. And I, I, I know you didn't suggest this, Ellen, but I wouldn't want us to narrow the scope of who might be interested, mm -hmm. you know, by saying we think it has to be X or Y. Um, oh, I agree. Yeah. 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 I'm not I think that the zoning was designed to limit it to the kinds of uses that would be appropriate in this setting. Right, and I said that somewhere in the letter, beginning or end, without being prescriptive again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, it, it it is unfortunate. I don't know anything about um, transforming a building into apartments, but our this is a small building. You know, this is. This isn't going to make nine apartments or ten apartments, and it's not certainly not going to make the number of units that that fabulous old school kind of across the uh, road from um, um, what's it called in uh, the bakery in Northampton, Hungry Ghost. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, Catholic, that's the Catholic school. Yeah, yeah. Or the D. A. Sullivan building down there, the one. Right. 
Right. I mean, those are just much, much, you know, those are 60,000 square feet, not six, you know, by order of magnitude. Yeah. Well, in a completely different kind of location. Right, right, right. And, and, and the, um, the Catholic school, I'd, I'd forgotten that it was a Catholic school, it is public housing, actually. Um, not just affordable housing, but it's, it's one of the nine uh, public housing installations in Northampton. Um, so for that reason, Judy, you may have wondered, I, I didn't put anything in it about the availability of housing, possible availability. No, I, I, I don't housing. think you agree. That's yeah, okay, good. All at all. Yeah. good, good. The, um, the statement you have about the Green Communities Grant um, in doing that research, I don't think that's the best option. I would think that if the town wanted to pursue this something to use, it'd be much better to use this uh, underdeveloped, underutilized properties grant. So do you think we should take this out about green communities? I, I, I tell you, I, I wondered about it from another point of view. I mean, green communities funded stuff has to be energy efficiency work. And I'm not actually sure how much energy efficient work could be done before you knew what was going to ha happen yeah. in the building. So I, I was And writing. it also, also um, would be competing with other possible uses in town where I don't think the right, unutilized building grant would. And I can't see that there's a time cycle on those grants on the underutilized ones, but I, I think it might pay to mention it just because I don't think anybody except Dan Dennehy who sent out one of his emails today. Oh, you mean you were copied on that too? <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> um, I, I don't know if anybody will want to pursue it. You know, everybody's shorthanded at town hall, but, but you might mention that that is does fund um, stabilization work and and design work as well as capital improvements. So it would fund something like roof work maybe or. Is that literally what it's called? Underutilized municipal buildings? Underutilized mass development, underutilized properties grants. It's fourth from the bottom on the list I sent out. I'm sorry. I see. Did that exist four years ago when you did your committee work, do you think? I don't think so. I mean, you, 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 this is when you added to your chart when yes. you did your work the other day. Okay. Um, the, the, the point that Judy just made um, about no, no one in the town offices being available to, to work on complicated projects is probably particularly acute right now when Lynn Sibley is about to retire. And Susan, you may know something that we don't know. I don't know if the personnel, is the personnel committee involved in uh, the searches? Uh, no, the select board is. Well, yeah. a member of the select board is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I mean, from what little I've heard around the edges, it sounds like, you know, we may just get into a revolving door situation where we're still going to be short of staff, at least staff right. doing jobs for a while. I, I mean, when we did the town hall work, Judy, you did a huge amount of work. I did some work. Alan, you and I did some work. We did those blasted mm -hmm. photographs that we had to paste to pieces of paper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Massachusetts. It was, right. Right. It was the, uh, quite sadly, neither of us had ever been kindergarten teachers. So I don't think we did a great job <laughs> of doing all of that. But Alan's photographs were great. <laughs> no, they worked. Um, I, my question is to be serious is how far should we go in reinforcing the fact that we we would like to be helpful and that we're available? Well, 
that you could say that. Yeah, it seems like we've done this before. Um, yeah. It might get us stuck in the middle of the project, but. Uh, I mean, what I, most, what I mostly want to do is remind them that we exist. Um, Julie Wagner, who I don't know, but now I've sat in a couple of meetings with her, seems very well intentioned and was kind of offering to call around and find out what funding sources might be available. But here, Judy and the committee had already done that, <laughs> you know, and um, so. Well, go ahead. Well, I think to mention this underutilized properties grant would, and and I can send you a descriptive phrase about what it does if, mm -hmm. but not till tomorrow morning. Um, well, it's it's. I mean, if I look on that, I can find it, right? I mean, it's an announced grant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, that's okay. I can do that. Um, yeah. Um, actually, I've got the. I downloaded the guidelines. I can send them to you. Okay, super. That's, um, that's enough. I think that's enough. Um, one, uh, go ahead. One thought that's not here, um, and and I know you and I have talked about it, but I think when you're talking about the the grants, I might somewhere i don't know whether it's in the section where we ask for a pres preservation restriction or when we're talking about grants but i think i would mention that for many of these grants a preservation restriction will be required anyway and it mm -hmm. does or or make it actually turn around make it positive that that it will provide eligibility for for some mm -hmm. of these grants mm -hmm. Um, in so something and something else, something from which I <laughs> took some language, um, it may have been in the visioning committee report. Uh, yes, it was. Where the point was made that for either a CPA grant or a state historic, well, preservation restriction isn't required for the historic preservation yeah, tax. But it was. But it was then. That was a while ago. Yeah, I mean, O'Bear. I changed the wording on the on the right. table. There is because there's no preservation restriction on the Blue School, is there? I don't think so. They didn't get a grant. But but uh, so it is not required for tax credits. It is required for some grants because he has been approved for tax credits. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think the way to, I think the place to say that would be, yeah, okay. Um, I, I said at the end, um, that we were looking forward to a solution that would do a couple of things, including relieving the town from responsibility for the maintenance and care of this building. I know that's on the minds of, um, I'm sure it will be on the minds of the, at least some members of the finance committee, because this is looking like a pretty tough uh, budget year. Um, school budget increases again, and some other things. Uh, and I think it's, I'm not sure if that's part of the issue that led to, at least to one member of the select board saying, you know, we should just take it down. Um, but I guess I wanted just to highlight that and make sure that everyone agrees that we should be noting that that is a desirable objective. I mean, I, I didn't say and returning it to the tax rolls. <laughs> The building, the building is assessed. The building and the property I checked at about six hundred thousand dollars, which means the tax on it, you know, it's going to be money. <laughs> so. Again, I don't think that's part of our remit, though. But to say what will, 
to to say to, you know, to make the decision and the announcement that it'll be going back in the tax rolls. Right. You mean leaving it at the relieving the town of maintenance and care is sufficient. Right. Yeah. Okay. People can extrapolate from that, but right. I think we have to stay in our lane. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, anything else that we want to do this letter? When well, are you timing, timing it to get there? Well, because uh, I, if it shows up tomorrow afternoon, I, I don't know that some of the select board will have read it. Um, I was, um, I think- Or given, even tomorrow morning. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm as I said, I was taken aback to see it on the agenda, which of course appeared just this weekend, or actually probably appeared Thursday night or Friday morning, because I was asked, when will you be getting back to us? And when I said sometime in March, heads nodded you know no one's the, the main agenda i think is that it must be that the, that the insurance policy uh, on the um building is is up for renewal and of course as soon as the historical society moved out of that building um it became much more expensive to insure because empty buildings cost more to insure um so I was, but to answer your question, Judy, I was planning because I'm better in the morning to get up early as I usually do and send it before eight o'clock tomorrow morning. <laughs> okay. Um, and I think well, what I would do, what I usually do is to write to, you know, the three and Brian and say, um, I note that you have an item on your agenda tonight. I'd be happy to join you. Um, I don't know if I'd hear Good. back from anybody or not. Does that sound okay? Sure. Why not? Mm. Uh, are you all okay with having me do what we've just talked about? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And thank you for what you've done so far. Yeah, that's yes, what I was going to say. I wanted to make sure it gets into the minutes that you did a tremendous amount of work and a great job at it. I mean, we we are going through and picking at it, but there is a lot of good stuff in there. Then you worked hard and we appreciate it. Well, thank you. It didn't feel like picking at all. <laughs> um, so I will do that. Obviously, copy you all. And um, do we have other business? Probably not. We just met, <laughs> right? I need about three seconds of Allison's time, but we can stop recording for that. Okay. Okay. All right. Should we adjourn the meeting? Well, if you adjourn the meeting, I can't talk to Allison, but this will we literally can adjourn the meeting. I can, oh, leave the meeting. I, I can adjourn the meeting and stop recording, but not turn the meeting off. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Do we have another meeting schedule? Yes, yeah. we do. We do. Um, yeah. at the end of Allison's minutes, March 20th.